I can give you a lot of different scenarios here, but let's just say your opponent broke. He made the one ball on the break. He made the two. Uh, he shot the three and scratched. So now you have ball in hand, and he made the three, too. Or you could say your opponent broke. He made the two ball on the break. Then he made the one, and then he made the three, and then he tried to shoot the four but missed it and also scratched it. Regardless of the scenario, you have ball in hand on the four ball. Your job is to get out from here. And if you have to pause the video right here and study this rack, go ahead and do it. But I'm going to break away for an intro and I'll be right back with this table. It's not going to work if you don't pause and take some time to think about it. Your brain is a very complicated muscle, and just like any muscle in your body, you have to train it to do things right. It's also not a secret. Beware of anyone that uses the word secret in her YouTube title. And just because someone knows something that you don't know does not make it a secret. It's the information age. There are no secrets. The greatest pool players in the world didn't have a meeting at Starbucks and agree to keep this a secret. With every layout, there's a pattern. And with every pattern, there's one key shot within the pattern that's going to determine if this is going to be simple or this is going to be difficult. Now it's not to say that you can't do it the difficult way you can but then your life is a grind and you don't want it to be a grind you want it to be simple. So what pocket did you decide to shoot the four ball in? And we can eliminate these two pockets down table just because you're coming a little too close to the eight ball if you shoot it in this pocket and you're I'm not even sure this is possible but you're if it is, you're cutting the four ball a little bit close to the six ball. So out of these four pockets at the top of the table, which pocket did you choose? Now, if you chose this pocket, you are right, but it might not be what you think. Almost always an eight ball, nine ball, you're shooting the object ball, the closest pocket to the object ball. And in this case, it's that side pocket, but again, it's not for the reason that you might think. All right, this, what I'm about to say, will also explain why thinking three balls ahead or four balls ahead is utter nonsense. You have to train your mind to think all balls ahead or however many object balls are left on the table when you get to the table. And you have to see the pattern and you have to see the key shot. And knowing the key shot comes directly after seeing the pattern. So we have determined that we're shooting the four ball in this pocket. So if that's what you chose, I want to ask you why you chose that pocket. And if your answer is that that's the easiest way to get on this five ball uh, by drawing it or arcing the cue ball back, on the five to shoot it in this pocket. I'm going to tell you that shooting the five ball in that pocket is the right way to go, but you're doing it the hard way. And your life is about to get difficult, and your pull game is about to get inconsistent. And here's why. You want to get absolutely straight in on the five ball because if you can hit a stop shot on the five ball, the six ball is a stop shot, the seven ball is a stop shot, the eight ball is a stop shot, and the nine ball is a stop shot. And naturally, that's just on this layout right here. Every layout is different, but I, I, I made the last part of the game simple because just to illustrate a point, and you'll understand that by the time this video ends. So this is why you need to be thinking all nine balls ahead or however many balls are left on the table. Now, if that sounds slow and complicated to you, I promise you the more you practice getting your brain to think this way, the faster you will get and you'll be able to look at any layout on the table and boom, you automatically see it. You know what to do. Let's do it. 
So let's take the example I gave of shooting the four ball and, and draw arching it back to the five ball in line with the five ball. So here it is. You're perfect, right? Well, no, you're not perfect. And I want to show you why you're not perfect. And in fact, uh, your, this pool game for you is going to be semi-miserable here, depending on if you can recover from that terrible shot right there. Actually, it's not a terrible shot. It's a terrible decision. And at this point, I know what you're thinking. You should have held up a little bit because you went a hair too long on the five. But does it really matter? And yes, it absolutely really does matter. So let's pull back a little bit on this shot and come up a little bit short. And now your life is even more miserable, and eventually I'll show you why it's more miserable. And, but not miserable, but difficult, and the game of pool is no fun. You know you have to be straight in on that five ball line. So let's take a look at the line. But before we do that, I want to explain that most players, amateur players, take this and just keep on practicing it until they're absolutely perfectly on that five ball line. That is wrong. You don't have to practice this shot. What you need to do is practice another shot to make sure you're on that line. I want to show you how to do it. Now, once you visualize the straight-in shot from the, the nearest intersecting rail to the pocket straight in, now you can see that you're well short of the five ball, and when you shoot that five ball, you're going to have difficulty getting on the six ball. And in the other example, you went too long. Now, that is better than coming up short. It's, it's a lot better. So the left side would be the right side, but you don't have any margin of error there. You can stun this ball and, and pull it back in line with the six. But again, you're doing it the difficult way. See, the problem is you're crossing the line. You want to play into that line. So doing it this way, the wrong way, gives you absolutely no margin of error. And to do this like this 10 times out of 10, you would have to be better than Efren, better than Shane, better than Jason, better than everybody who's ever played this game. So let's take a look at the margin of error you have if you play it this way. So here's your margin of error, that tiny little gray oval. That's all you have to work with. And if you can do this consistently, you are the best ever. The idea is to play into that five ball line. I want to show you how to do it right now. Your goal is to make the game as easy as humanly possible. And when you took ball in hand, you've already decided to make it as difficult as humanly possible. So let's eliminate uh, this line, this line, and let's uh, take cue ball in hand. And I'm going to show you how to do this. As we determine, the five ball is the key ball in this whole run. Out. Getting right on the five gives you a gravy, simple stop shot run out. So how do we get on the spot that we need to? And if we take a look at the whole pattern, we understand, you know, how to get out and how to make it all simple. Except for maybe this five ball, and we're a little bit unsure where to get on the five ball from the four. Let's take the opposite of this uh, this five ball line and extend it to the nearest rail and what we get is this so let's take the opposite of that short line and extend that to the nearest rail and what we get is this now let's take ball in hand and shoot the four in the same pocket in the side pocket and come off the four at the opposite of the, that angle so when the cue ball comes off this rail it's at this natural angle, and it's coming off the bot or the top rail at this natural angle, and now we're in line for the five ball. And it's all done naturally. As soon as the cue ball hits this point of the rail, you're on line. And if you come up short, you know, if you hit it like it was and, and you know, just kind of baby it, and you come up here, you're still on the line. You want to get off the rail, of course. I mean, if, if, you come, if you hit it too hard and you come up here, you're still on the line. You can still hit a stop shot and do what you have to do.
And this is why, and again, it's no secret, this is how and why the pros are making things look so easy. They never have a hard shot because they know how to play into the line. This is also why they're always using rails, even when it appears to an amateur that they don't have to do that. Yes, they do have to do it in order to play the line and get that massive margin of error. And I left that little gray oval on the table because uh, now we're going to compare the margin of errors that we have. So this was your margin of error, this tiny little oval, doing it the wrong way and the very difficult way. And now you have this whole entire rectangle doing it the natural way and the easy way. So let's go back and shoot the four ball. And there's no English necessary here. You don't want to spin this ball because you're going to screw up the natural angle coming off that first row, and therefore you're not going to be able to get on the line for the five ball. So, but you will need some top pan English. How much you're going to need is just going to be dependent on how fast or how slow your table is. So we're shooting the four to come off that first rail at this angle to hit the top rail at this opposite angle and to come off the third rail in line for the five. And let's say we get here. And here you already know the whole pattern, so you know all you have to do here is hit a stop shot on the five. Let's do that. And the rest of it is just a simple stop shot gravy out. We'll go through it if you want. Let's go stop on the six, stop on the seven, stop on the eight, and stop on the nine. Uh, now, I recommend setting this up and doing it over and over. And if you're not good at hitting stop shots, I have a, stop, a great, at least one, maybe two or three, stop shot videos on YouTube. And I'll try to dig up the link right there. But you need to practice stop shots. They'll also help straighten out your stroke. The key ball is going to be different in every game, and that key ball is determined by whatever's going to make it the, the easiest way to run the rack. So if you get on the key ball the right way, it's going to be an easy rack. If you get on it bad, if you don't get on it at all, it's going to make the rack difficult to run. They're not that much better than you physically. The big difference is they know how to think. And their agenda is to keep it simple while you keep insisting on making things very difficult on yourself. To play your way, you would have to be an unbelievable, consistent, great shot maker. To do it their way, if they were getting positioned for you and all you had to do is shoot, you too could be running out consistently. It's just that no one took you aside and told you. It's all about thinking. You're going to have to think, and you're going to have to think the right way from now on. It was late at night, and I was sitting at my house with a woman, and on the computer is a Justin Bergman playing Corey Dolan in April. And I'm sitting there fascinated by what they're doing. She pulls up the other office chair and has a seat next to me. And after about five or ten minutes of watching these guys, she said, I don't get it. This is boring. Why are you fascinated with this? And I, and I replied by saying, she's right. It, it is boring. And, and I tried to explain it. it, it it's boring because these guys are, are geniuses. They're absolutely geniuses on the pool table. They might not be geniuses anywhere else, but on the pool table, they're geniuses. They're brilliant. And she still didn't get it. So, you know, I mean, she's not a pool player, so I didn't want to get into why they're brilliant. So I said, that they're, not, they're not really, you know, here to entertain us. They're here. All that they care about is getting the money and winning this tournament. And uh, she still didn't get it, and she, she, she said something very profound and said, this is why there's no money in pool, because nobody can stand to watch it who's not, you know, a legitimate pool player. And I said she was right again. Um, the reason pool players like watching this kind of stuff is because, well, number one, they're learning, and, and number two, they understand what these guys are doing. Um, it, it looks easy to you and everybody else who doesn't play pool, but but playing line. See, I didn't want to get real into it, so I I didn't I didn't, and uh, 
and I just said she's right and then I turned it off and gave her my 100% attention. So there's that story. If you ever, if you ever get a minute, uh, watch uh, Justin Bergman uh, playing Corey Dole April. Um, if you know what I'm doing with this video, you'll see it all right there. Peace everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll have another video of me and Mark really soon.